from the heart. Okay, so here we go. The very first episode of Horror from the Heart. Now, you probably clicked on this and was wondering, well, it has horror in the name. I wonder what this is about. And decided to check it out. Well, my name's Josh, and what this is about is horror stuff. Plain and simple. And I'm not just talking about specific things like the movies or, you know, the books or anything in particular like that. I, what I want to do is I want to talk about everything when it comes to horror. And I do mean everything. Anything from the really cutesy, stupid stuff that we enjoy to the actual real life stuff. You know, because there's a lot of interesting stuff that's out there. But also one of the other things I wanted to talk about as well was how things have changed throughout all the years too of uh, everything that is horror because you look at something from way back in the day compared to now and either it doesn't look as good or it's super super cheesy but that's some of the stuff i wanted to talk about now i'm going to start off with something really kind of boring and that's just the definition of horror because i don't think that a lot of people have actually taken the time to really look into something like that now you go to Google, and Google describes it as an intense feeling of fear, shock, or disgust. And most people just associate horror with just being like grotesque monsters or just being scared of things like that. You know, it's not necessarily just the idea of being scared. It's, you know, what's kind of shocking. What's one of those things that, oh man, I just didn't expect that kind of thing. Because there's other horror movies out there or other horror literature that's out there where it's more of a shock than it is an actual fear, you know, or being disgusted about things, you know, because, yeah, there's some really disgusting things out there in the horror world as well. To start off, though, I want to talk about where I started out with horror. I had to have been maybe like five or six years old, and my mom introduced me into watching the Nightmare on Elm Street series. Uh, and I want to say it started off with the third movie, uh, Dream Warriors, if I remember right. Um, but I also do remember, I mean, technically it's a horror movie, but technically at the time it was a PG movie too, was Jaws. I remember watching that when I was a kid, but it was the Nightmare on Elm Street movie that completely got me. And it was, it was just so intense and it scared the living shit out of me but at the same time it was very intriguing because of how Freddy Krueger was with this quick little wit on how he did things the inventive kills that they had and I think that's one of the parts that really kind of got me was just the idea of like okay I know this is fake but how did they do that you know and that's what really kind of really just got to me in that way and uh, got me really wanting to check more into horror. And from there, it just kind of progressed on and on and on. You know, she was, my mom was a big influence when it came to a lot of the horror stuff that I got into. Um, she's not so much into it now as she was whenever uh, she was in her 20s. But at the same time, you know, so that's what happens to a lot of different people. Everybody gets different things as they grow up. But it's with that, though, that just got me started. And from there, it just grew and grew because it, it was just so enamoring watching all of that and seeing how it went and just being so scared, too, at the same time. But you just, it was like that, like that bag of chips. You just couldn't put it down. You just wanted to keep going. You know, and I remember also way back in that day, that was one of the first times I ever got introduced to horror video games, too. And this is way back in the 80s, too. And it was actually a Nightmare on Elm Street game. And it was for the Commodore 64. And I used to love playing the hell out of that game with my dad. Me and him would go through that over and over and over. And I always get stuck at a certain point. But it was just so fun, you know, going through that. And, and I would be up at night because of nightmares from that. And it just cracks me up now because it's like you know that thought process of being a kid and being like oh my god that's so scary compared to being an adult and going like oh well that's actor such and such and such you know and this is how they did this you know most days it's 
CG and with minor makeup stuff. But back in the day, it was you know, a lot of practical effects. You know, and then the video games, of course, were just video games. And being an adult, that kind of stuff doesn't really scare you as much. I mean, I know some people still get scared about that kind of thing. And it's like, if it does, nothing wrong with you. And that's part of being in this, uh, in this realm of horror. But it's still fun nonetheless. But see, even getting with on that kind of an idea, too, is like where it's not as scary now for a lot of people as it was whenever they were a kid. And as I was saying, you know, going from practical effects to CG and things like that. But just the way the stories are told in general have changed a lot. You know, whereas like we were very modest way back in the day with vivid description on how things were, but without being overtly disgusting to you go to like something like Mortal Kombat, which, you know, a lot of people wouldn't consider that horror, but it is definitely in the horror genre because of the shock and awe that they have from, you know, what they have with fatalities and things like that. You know, we're, we're, we're a lot more visceral with details of like people exploding and guts flying over here and there. And it's, it's interesting the way that's gone, you know, and I know a lot of it's because of censorship and throughout the years of how we came about being from like the fifties and the forties and things like that, you know, where it's like, Oh, you know, you know, no nudity or no visceral descriptions of this or that, you know, you can't show somebody being split in half, you know, cause if it was, it was like a cutaway or it was a shadow and things like that, you know, cause it gave it this air of mystery. But I honestly kind of feel like some of that kind of stuff in, intensified how that feeling was because it wasn't just thrown out there to you. It was your own head going, this is what it looks like, and going, oh my god, why did my brain think of that? Because of the shock and the awe and just how it was. But it really has changed throughout the years, too. I mean, not just with the camera techniques and with how our monsters are or how our villains are. I mean, let's not just say monsters. Let's say villains. Because, to be honest, there's a lot of really good ones that aren't just monsters. You know, there's a lot of good creature features out there, but there's a lot of good psycho killer type of people out there, too. I mean, Michael Myers is technically like, you know, the psycho killer thing. That's if we ignore uh, a lot of the other movies that are in between. But I digress. So, going back onto that, though, as I was saying, I, what I'm wanting to do is I want to talk about everything when it comes to horror. And really what it is, is I want this to be more of like a discussion than it is an actual, like, here's an informative thing, and you have Walter Cronkite, here's the news tonight on horror. You know, I don't need it to be anything like that. I want it to be an actual discussion of things rather than me just spouting off shit to you. With that, though, I'm going to go ahead and end this right here. I hope you guys enjoyed kind of a little bit of me just kind of ranting with this a uh, little bit more structure when it comes to future episodes of things and, and be discussing some more horror stuff here and there so definitely keep an eye out for the next episode whenever it comes around i'm gonna try to see if i can do this weekly um given that i have the time yay coronavirus pandemic Woohoo! um so with that though if you made it all the way here, thank you for listening. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment down below. And if you like the video, leave a like. If you're listening to this on podcast, uh, leave me a review if you can, please. You can also follow me on Twitter at HorrorFTH. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.